Okay, so we're moving on to upper extremity. So for this video, we're gonna be demonstrating um, all of this week's projections, which include the finger, the thumb, the hand, and the wrist. So we're gonna start with the finger. And Mrs. Skaggs is gonna be my patient today. So if I'm gonna be looking at her hand, then I'm gonna to have to remove everything from her hand that's gonna get in my way. So she's wearing a ring, she's wearing a watch, and we're gonna work with her left hand. So I'm gonna have her take those off. And we're gonna take a look at what we would do for several different fingers if we were gonna x-ray the finger. So we'll start with the first finger here. If I was gonna look at her first finger, we're gonna do three projections of every finger. The, P, the PA, the oblique, and the lateral. So we'll start with the PA, which is the easiest for the patient to do because their hand just has to be flat on the image receptor. In this case, I'm gonna ask them to set their hand flat and you can see that her hand is not very straight with the receptor. So I'm always gonna to wanna to match the angle that's comfortable for the patient. I'm not gonna to try to crank her elbow over here and make her match me it's really easy for me to turn this and make it more comfortable for her. So I'm going to turn this until I think that her first finger here is straight to my image receptor and it's fairly in the middle here where we can get the best image. So I'm going to actually scoot this up a little bit because I have my little triangle here, my little triangle here indicating the center and so I'm going to kind of try to center from there. Um, I've got my tubo overhead here uh, which is that 40 inch SID for all of these. So I'm gonna move over and center to her PIP joint, her proximal interphalangeal joint, which is that middle knuckle right in the middle of her finger. And then I'm gonna use my collimator um, box to turn and uh, just get very, very straight. But this, you can see now her finger is running straight down the center line. And I'm gonna make sure I collimate in really far here because we're just looking at this one finger so I don't need to see anything else. I'm gonna come in really close and make sure that I am getting her MCP, her metacarpophalangeal joint here. Um, so I wanna make sure I've got an inch of clearance there past that to be sure I've got that on there. Um, again, we're, you, we're looking at her left hand. So I'm gonna use my left marker. And I'm gonna mark it right up here. Now we're using very small techniques for these, but regardless, I'm still going to shield. So we can do a full shield on this, or you know, we can just make sure we shield their thyroid, make sure we shield their lap. Now we got a full shield out here, so you know what? Let's just do that. Get that on you. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to get her back right where I want her, right here, there we go. All right, so that is our PA finger. Um, we're going to be using a KVP of 63 on this. Her finger's really small, so we probably wouldn't use anything over one mass, but maybe a little bit less than that, actually. So the next thing I'm projection I'll do on her finger will be an oblique. So you can use a positioning aid if you want to get that 45 degrees, um, or you can just have her elevate her hand, whichever's easiest for the patient and whichever's easiest for you. But we're gonna use a sponge just so you guys can see how that works. We've got a 45 degree sponge here, so I'm gonna have her rest her finger on there. Um, and we're just gonna have her rest her finger anywhere on that 45 degree side. And then I'm gonna again center over her to that PIP, the same centering point and doing the same collimation to make sure I get the MCP. And I'm also gonna make sure I get my marker snuck in there. Always making sure we've got our marker out of the shadow of the finger so it's not gonna be in the anatomy when it loads. The last projection of this first finger is the lateral. Now what's different about the first finger in the lateral is that we always wanna make sure we're getting our finger as close to the image receptor as possible to reduce our OID object to image distance. So since we have five fingers, we do that in different ways depending upon which finger it is. If I have her turn her hand like this, 
Um, this first finger is really far away from my image receptor. So that's not the best way. We're gonna have a lot of magnification. So for this first finger, it makes more sense to turn it the other way so it's right up against here. Some of your patients might have a hard time doing this, um, but if you kind of work with the upper part of their arm, have them bend their elbow, maybe you have them straighten their elbow, you can have them kind of lean their whole shoulder in if that helps them turn, just to make sure you're getting that finger very lateral. Um, and sometimes they kind of get uncomfortable, but there's some ways that you can work with their entire arm to fix that. <laughs> Mrs. Skaggs can do it very easily, so we don't have to get her into all these kind of crazy positions. But we'll ha have her just turned up like that, and we'll center right again, still on that PIP joint. And I'm going to collimate in really well. sure I use my marker. All of these are the same technique because the size of the finger doesn't really change no matter which direction we turn it. Now if we're going to be x-raying her middle finger, we would be doing all these same things, um, the PA, and we would use the sponge again, sneak that under there and get her at 45. And then we, for the lateral, um, either direction that we turn her is fairly going to be the same. So the middle finger is pretty well just whatever is easiest for the patient to do. So in this case, um, you know, neither position is very easy and sometimes it's quite actually quite uncomfortable for the patient because they're not used to sticking that finger out, <laughs> hopefully. Um, so we're gonna, just going to turn her this direction. Um, we're going to try to make sure she's really lateral. So I'm going to turn her hand back a little bit. Again, we're centering on that PIP for all these fingers. Um, sometimes this fourth finger can be a little wonky and it's hard to get out of the way. So if you have that, you can either put some tape on that finger or you can put tape on this finger to hold it back. Or you could use something like you've already got out. You could use your sponge here and you can kind of sneak that in between the fingers to make sure you get this one out here by itself. So just whatever you, you know, the patient might need. They might not need anything. That's the third finger. As for the fourth finger, that one can be even more difficult to get away from the other fingers. As you can see, when you kind of ball your fingers up, you're pretty well still superimposing that bottom part of the finger no matter what. So you can do what Mrs. Skaggs is doing right now and keep that fin pinky finger back and ha have them use their thumb to hold down the other fingers. That will help get it out of the way. Um, or you can, if they can't, manipulate this pinky finger out and they can't hold it down, you can again try to sneak your sponge in here to help them out and make sure that that finger's out there all by itself. Or again, you could use some tape on the end of this finger to kind of pull it back away from the other fingers and just keep it right out here with tape. Um, those are some options for you. The pinky finger, of course, it's closest to the IR when it's that side of your hand is down and you have kind of the similar same problems, so you could use tape on it, something along those lines to keep it out of the way. So those are those fingers. Then we have one more finger, that's our thumb. So we'll do that one next. With your thumb. I'm gonna strap this because it keeps falling. With your thumb, usually it's easiest to start not with the PA like the other fingers, but with the oblique because they're nearly in the oblique position just when their hand is flat. So Mrs. Skaggs is being a very good patient and turning <laughs> her hand the way it needs to be. But typically your patient is gonna set their hand right down because they think that's what you want them to do, to be right in the middle, and that's close. But when we're just looking at the thumb, we want the thumb in the middle. So we're gonna orient the thumb so that it's straight up towards the top of the receptor. Again, the top of the receptor is indicated that we know with that um, orange stripe there. So we're gonna make sure their thumb is nice and straight here, which means their other fingers are gonna kind of be off to the side. Um, and that's what it's gonna look like when it's in the proper position. Now, her finger is close to the, her thumb is close to being in an oblique position, but not quite yet. So what we're gonna do to help her kind of get to that position is we're gonna use our same triangle sponge, but this time rather than putting it under the finger we're looking at, we're gonna put it under the fingers we're not looking at. And that's gonna give us kind of a height advantage that turns the thumb further in the direction that we want it. Now we don't want it all the way turned, we just want it at a slight angle, a 45 degree angle, just like the other 
um, fingers that we were doing. Every oblique we're doing with the fingers are at a 45. So then we're going to line up here. And again, you're always going to be using your marker. So making sure we're just straight here and we're at a nice angle. When we do the lateral, we can tuck this sponge even closer, keeping her fingers on it and keep her thumb rolled really far up. That's gonna give us more of a lateral here now. And we're gonna make sure the thumb is nice and straight and the nail is all the way turned towards this direction rather than we can see most of the nail in the oblique position. When we do the PA position, I'm sorry, well, what is this, a PA? Um, I don't know if it's an A. So for your thumb, again, we're going to try to get a front projection of it. And in order to get it really close to the IR, we do rotate their hand all the way around. Again, when she turns her hand like this, now I'm kind of got not straight on my image receptor. So I, this is an uncomfortable position to put the patient in. We want to make sure we're turning our IR so that we are straight with their thumb, keeping that top of our IR in mind as well. So I'm going to move my box, collimator box over here, get right over that thumb. There we go. And again, this can be difficult for your patient to get into sometimes. Straightening, straightening their arm often helps. Um, and that would be the front projection of the thumb there. All right, so that is everything for our fingers. Uh, now we'll move on to our hand. So when we're doing the hand, Again, we usually just start with this PA projection first because it's easiest for them to just rest their hand flat and we'll get them right in the center of that image receptor. We're gonna center on this third MCP joint there, that big knuckle on the third digit. And for these, I'm gonna make sure that her forearm is resting on the radiographic exam table because that will make sure that I have a really straight line um, in both her uh, forearm bones here um, to make sure that the portion of the wrist that's visualized is nice and straight as well. We don't want this twisted or angled awkwardly. So just have them rest their arm. It's more comfortable for them anyhow. So center on that third MCP, then we'll open our collimation to include the entire hand. Now typically I'm seeing right now, I've got a lot of light here by her um, pinky. I'm thinking, oh, I'm good. But if we look over here at her thumb, I, I'm not going to get all of her thumb in there. So you want to make sure you're looking all the way across on your um, patient to be sure you've got everything in there uh, before you expose. We want to do good at our collimation and make sure it's nice and close, but we don't want to clip anything off because that means we'll have to do a second exposure for that patient. All right, so there we've got it nice and collimated. I'm going to put my marker in here. I'm using still my left marker for her left hand and I'm going to mark out here on the lateral side of her. Always we're going to mark on the lateral side of the hand. So for this next projection we're going to do, we're always going to do again like I said for all of these upper extremities we're doing um, three projections. So we'll do an oblique hand. Um, for these hand projections we're going to use a different type of sponge. We're going to use this stair step type sponge. So for the oblique projection, I'm gonna rest this out here and I'm gonna have her set her hand on it. She might look at it and say, how the heck am I supposed to put my hand on it? <laughs> <laughs> but since she's been doing this a while, she knows how it works. So each one of these stair steps you use for a finger. Um, this is a really good, easy way to help you position a lateral, but currently we're doing the 45 degree oblique. So we're not gonna have her hand quite as steep. I'm still gonna have her using, keeping her forearm here on the table, but I'm gonna turn her wrist a little bit so her wrist is really out of 45. And I can see, like I said, a, a big portion of her nails along the side here, and she's kind of turned this direction. So as you can see, her wrist is coming out right here at the angle corner of my imaging plate. I don't want that. I want my image to look nice and straight. So I'm gonna kind of raise up this sponge in her hand a little bit so I can turn my plate under her and get my plate nice and centered with her wrist. And I'm gonna center over here on the third MCP. Check my collimation side to side, make sure I've got everything on there, not clipping anything. 
and mark on the lateral side of her hand. And that's our oblique. Now when we're going to do our lateral, we're still using this same sponge as we mentioned, but now we're kind of manipulating the wrist here and turning the wrist all the way lateral so that then her fingers turn lateral. And we've got them spaced nicely with this positioning sponge and now they're all in a lateral position. I'm going to again center here right over the MCP, but this time I'm using the first, or sorry, the second digit MCP, um, which should be superimposed with the third that we've been using this entire time. So I'm going to collimate in a little bit side to side and bring my marker in so I keep it right there at the lateral aspect. And that's your lateral hand. And the last thing we're going to show you today is going to be your wrist. Once again, we're doing three projections for that. So we'll start with the PA projection, and I'm going to have her just rest out here in the middle. Again, your patient's going to just set their hand down like that. And we, we're looking now, our focus is on the wrist, so I want that in the center of my imaging plate. So I'm going to have her raise her hand up. I'm going to slide back a little bit more until my triangle is a little bit closer to being in line here with her, the center of her wrist. Now that I've got that in the correct position, I'm going to move my tube over here. And I'm just going to center right in the middle of her carpals. Now I'm going to collimate in very closely just leaving about an inch clearance on either side, two and a half inches from top to bottom. I want her wrist nice and flush to this image receptor to give myself some good detail. And the best way to do that, because naturally when our fingers are laying down, we're kind of raising our wrist up off of the um, table. So the easiest way to make sure that you've got good contact with the table, um, with the image receptor in your wrist, is to have them kind of bend their fingers up. You can have them make a fist like that, but that's not even necessarily required. They can just kind of bend their fingers even just like that, just have their knuckles bent up. And that will help ensure that you get good contact on your receptor. So now that we've got that looking good, she's her forearm is resting nice and flat. I'm gonna mark this out here on the lateral side again using my left marker, and we'll take that exposure. Then we're gonna do an oblique. Again, I'm gonna help myself by using this triangle sponge. I'm just gonna rest that there and I'm gonna have um, half of her hand up here just sitting at a 45 degree angle. I'm still centering at the mid carpal area and I'm keeping my collimation nice and close. Leaving myself enough room to put my marker in here on the lateral aspect. And the final projection here we're gonna show you is the lateral wrist. So I'm gonna get rid of that sponge and I'm gonna bend her elbow at a 90 degree angle here. That's gonna help us get her wrist a little bit more straight for us in this lateral projection. And again, I'm moving my image receptor to match the line of her arm, keeping my um, orange line here always at the top of the image. I'm going to center over her mid carpal area and collimate in nice and close. Now, these bones that are in your forearm can sometimes be a little bit difficult to make sure that they're superimposed. Um, the best thing to do to make sure that you're getting things as aligned as possible is that you want to keep their entire arm in a horizontal um, position. So on this table, we do not have the advantage of being able to raise the height of the table. Um, so I'm probably just, for this circumstance, in clinic, you would want to raise your table up until it's flush underneath of their um, humerus. But for this circumstance, I'm going to have her lower her shoulder down until we get her humerus nice and straight. Now I can see we've got this very nice horizontal plane going for her entire arm and that's going to help our positioning quite a bit. So now I'm going to make sure I'm right in the middle. And how will I know when I've got this very, very lateral? Well, it's going to take time, but I can tell you that I always turn their thumb back because it doesn't feel um, straight to the patient 
but if you turn their thumb back just slightly, that will get your wrist nice and lateral. Again, I marked on the lateral side here. And those are all of your upper extremity projections.